And real quick before we start, I wanted to mention that we're doing a $500 RP giveaway with some friends. It's going to be super easy to enter. All you need to do is check the Gleam link in the description and follow the instructions there. Thanks and enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. We've been making what could have been episodes for quite a long time now, but thanks to all the new champions that have been released over the years, we've still got tons of awesome older champions to cover. And of course Riot's releasing information about this kind of stuff all the time. So today, we'll be taking a look at Ari, whose development was happening way back in 2011 under the leadership of Riot Ezreal. And if you enjoy the video, please leave a like on it or let us know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for some more videos. Ari's entire development was centered on a single premise, to take the story of the Nine-Tailed Fox and bring it into League of Legends. The fox spirit is a really common myth in East Asian countries, originating in Chinese mythology but also showing up in different variations in Japanese and Korean mythology as the Kitsune and Gumiho respectively. Riot's decision to focus on the Korean variant of this particular myth was due to her being scheduled to release around the time that the Korean servers for League of Legends were being launched. The story of these fox spirits is pretty straightforward. A fox that lives for a thousand years becomes a Kumiho, gaining the ability to freely transform. Typically, they shapeshift into the form of a beautiful woman before setting out to seduce men and eat their hearts, livers, and or souls depending on which version of the legend you might have listened to. This gave Riot a really straightforward premise for development, but as always, they wanted to put their own little twist on the character trope. Kumiho are generally seen as purely evil characters in the mythology. It's kind of the equivalent to maybe Western vampires, if that makes sense. So Riot decided to try a different approach by creating a little bit more of a sympathetic character. It essentially meant that they wanted to keep their Kumiho as a fox spirit in the form of a beautiful woman that ate the souls of her enemies, but they wanted her narrative to give her a more relatable motivation for killing. Riot ended up solving this by developing a story about a fox that wanted to become human. The fox stumbled upon the aftermath of a human battle and was drawn to a man taking his dying breaths. The fox instinctively absorbed the essence of his life and was partially transformed in the process. She was crazy beautiful and that gave her a power to charm men into their deaths, allowing her to complete her transformation by becoming more human. However, that growing humanity came with morality and the fox found herself unable to kill without remorse. And with this story, Riot managed to achieve their goals of drawing inspiration from the East Asian mythology, but they also managed to create a more forgivable character that wasn't as pure villainous that you might find in the typical Gumiho myths. Since the Nine-Tailed Fox was based on the Korean legend and developed to coincide with the release of the Korean server, at the time Riot Games actually decided that the best way to name the character would be to hold a poll on their Korean website. Riot featured six options that they decided would suit the new champion and allowed the Korean player base to vote on them. The options for the choice of name were Danbi, meaning savior or saving rain, Nabi, meaning butterfly, Ruru, meaning dazzle, Ari, meaning graceful or elegant, Chorong, meaning glittering, Dasom, meaning loving. Of those six options, obviously the winner of course was Ari, which Riot slightly modified with the addition of the letter H because they wanted the name to just be a little bit more unique. As far as we know, this might have been the only time that the community was actually directly responsible for naming a champion, but maybe leave us a comment if you know of another occasion that this happened because I'm not actually sure about that one. And the last thing we wanted to talk about before diving into Ari's gameplay development was her concept art, which is actually quite interesting because her art had major changes and redesign after she was announced and just before her launch. Ari's earliest concept art looks really familiar. Her clothing looks reminiscent of traditional Korean clothing, the hanbok, and she has her orb, ears, and of course the nine tails. However, the original splash art for Ari had some very noticeable differences. Instead of actually having nine physical tails, they were simply an extension of her outfit which was wrapped around her, and she actually didn't have any ears at all. And this announcement of the art design to the community was met with some backlash, so they wanted to make some last minute art changes, fixed a lot of those issues, but it's really curious that they were removed from the original concept arts at all. Being a fox spirit and having nine tails is kind of like a very key component to the character, so eventually Riot saw sense 
add in the back end, and redesign the RE splash art that was originally released with the character that most of you guys might be familiar with. Moving on, we've got Ari's gameplay development, and it was quite unlike the usual ideation that we're kind of used to hearing about with champion designs. Her kit originally included an orb, a charm, foxfire, and a dash, even right from the very start of development. This was due to the fact that they were all very directly based on her thematic. Riot knew almost exactly what kind of abilities Ari should have, so instead of the typical development, it was more about fine-tuning those mechanics to make her as satisfying to play as possible. So let's take a look at each of those abilities individually and talk about what changed during her production. Starting with Ari's most iconic ability, her charm. Ari always needed to have a single target charm simply because it was a very clear and direct connection to her theme as a character. The beautiful fox spirit needed to be able to make people fall in love with her. A straight line skill shot was the easiest implementation of that vision that could be balanced, so all that really changed was the speed at which charmed champions would move towards her. Originally, charmed champions would run towards Ari at full speed head on with the intent that they were clearly desperate to be with her. The gameplay for this didn't really work because Ari would, as Riot Ezreal described it, walk the lovestruck dummies directly into her tower, making it almost as powerful as kind of like a blitzcrank hook. Adding a slowing element to charm meant that Ari could still use it to set up her abilities, but without it being so broken that it would just totally cause your death and bait you into some really bad situations. Next up, we've got Ari's bread and butter fighting ability, Orb of Deception. Riot likes every champion to have a really clear source of power, like a particular weapon or maybe a technique, and in Ari's case, it's of course her orb. Players instinctively knew that she's going to throw it out, so the gameplay makes sense, and it also gives her a tool to drain life essence from enemies to match up with her narrative. Riot's original Orb of Deception actually functioned mechanically a lot more like Orianna's Q by stopping at the end of its travel path. Ari could then reactivate the Q again to pull it back towards her. During playtesting, however, players would reactivate the orb instantly almost every single time when they used the ability, so it made a lot of sense to change the ability to just boomerang back by itself. The orb also used to travel at a set speed throughout the entire travel time, but it felt really underwhelming and kind of weird and clunky to use as a result. So giving it a fast forward and backwards motion with a little bit of a pause once it hit the max range gave a little bit of extra strategic depth by allowing Ari to reposition herself for maximum damage on the return of the skill shot, or maybe even change the direction at which the ability was aimed. Next up, we've got Foxfire, which was based on the myths in which the nine-tailed fox could literally generate fire, often acting as a representation of the spirits that they had collected. This was the case with Ari, who could originally use her Foxfire to illuminate nearby bushes over the duration, which was quickly stopped because of actually the tech issues that it caused at the time. A later version of testing with Foxfire gave Ari 9 missiles to shoot off, but shooting off 9 projectiles made each one individually feel a lot weaker than intended. Riot Ezreal wanted to keep the number 9 in her kit as much as possible, kind of like Jin and the number 4, so instead he created the 9 hit passive and changed Foxfire to use 3 projectiles. It allowed each one to carry more damage and be more satisfying, and also allowed her to build into her passive quite efficiently by using multiples of 3. 3 hits from Foxfire, 3 hits from a Charm plus Orb of Deception combo. It kind of flows and makes sense, at least on paper. And next, we've got Ari's Spirit Rush. She was initially designed to be a mage assassin type character that would kind of skirt the edge of a fight until she could pick a moment to engage, and giving her a dash fit that thematic really well and just made sense with the gameplay. In fact, the original version of her dash actually had unlimited range, though it would drain Ari's mana as long as she used it. If she passed over an enemy champion, she damaged them, almost like a moving, walking Ezreal ultimate, doing just crazy damage. In fact, Riot Ezreal's biggest regret actually was having to change this ultimate because of how it interacted with the Dominion map. Spirit Rush was changed because of Dominion, that's actually kind of crazy to think about. 
So it was changed to be a three part dash on an ammo system, kind of like a Kali, but RE players would almost always save one dash as sort of a safety button, an escape button, which was really no fun to play against and really limited counterplay against her and just made her way too safe of a character. So it was changed to a timed ultimate that allowed up to three dashes within a certain window of time upon casting the ability. Either way, that's just about going to wrap up all the information we know about for the development of Ari. Of course, I always love going back and looking at the game's older champions, so definitely let us know in the comment section below which champion we should maybe take a look at next. In the meantime, go check out some of our other episodes on the series. Most champion developments are quite different from this one, and everyone has their own sort of unique little story. Either way, it looks like that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.